Welcome back to Gin and Teacups. Gabby Young is not only a great artist, she's also a great human being. And here's to prove it is a piece of her mind. The first question we asked was about plans. Not so evil ones, given Gabby's angelic face, but plans nonetheless. Gabby just left, in fact, for a tour which would bring her to Japan, Australia and the US. So, is she gonna take over the world? I'd let her. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing. So tomorrow morning I leave for, for Japan. We're, we're in Tokyo for a week. We're doing about three shows over there. And then, um, then Australia, so we're going to Sydney and Melbourne. We were going to go north, but sadly because of the floods and everything, that bit's been uh, postponed, shall we say. And I, I'm really, I really hope everything's okay over there because it's all a bit worrying, isn't it? But um, we, uh, And then we're going on to um, America, then Canada, and then back to America for South by Southwest. So it's a really exciting trip and I'm, I'm gone for two months and um, I definitely feel like a real artist this year, you know, I'm going on tour for two months, it's very exciting. Uh, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. If artists are born and not made, then Gabby's been one for the last two decades, but it's only recently that she's been getting the attention that she rightfully deserves. We asked her if she felt it herself like a natural development or if somehow it felt like an overnight change. Uh, it's definitely been, yeah, it's been a natural kind of climb and I've always wanted it to be and this is why I didn't um, want to join a big label and why I started my own record company because I, I think that it's more healthy and normal and human to, to work your way up as opposed to suddenly get given a contract and tomorrow you're hugely famous, you know, I think that's quite scary and, uh, and a lot of people, you know, suffer because of it and I really never wanted that to be something for me and my family to have to worry about and so right from the start I definitely wanted to do it my own way um, and that means that I can keep control of it and keep control of the pace and make sure that it doesn't move too fast or move too slow because you know sometimes you have to sit around and wait for your record to come out whereas when it's your own label you just do it when you're ready um, and uh, so yeah it made it made a lot of sense for me to do it that way but I think that definitely this year does feel like it's suddenly you know I've got um, the stirrups on and I'm ready to take off kind of thing. <laughs> Since Gabby is working on her second album, we really can't wait to hear some new songs soon. But how does she feel still touring with the songs for the first one, which is currently being re-released? The new album is definitely in the making. I've been writing all of last year and then uh, we've been recording since November. So I've been kind of, we've got all the demos down and now we're, we're going to be working on it while we're away as well and kind of, you know, arranging and sending it backwards and forwards with the producer. So we're doing a very 21st century, actually. Um, but then we'll get a time in, in April and then later in September as well to get into the studio and really kind of start experimenting and playing the instruments and doing it all live, which I'm really excited about. But We're On This Together has basically been um, re-released because we've now got a, big lab a bigger label behind us that um, that's licensing our album. So it means that we've got a nice... Um, bigger team, bigger audience to get it out to, and uh, and so it's yeah, it's this kind of the re-release to say actually this is we can properly do it now as opposed to just selling it gigs and things. It's now in H and V and things. So yeah, Gabby's style mixes influences from the past together, making her sound like nothing else. So has she found the secret formula to true originality? Well, um. I like to think so. I mean, it's, it's really flattering that you say that you can kind of genre defy it because um, whenever I write a song, I never kind of go, oh, this is going to be a folk song, or this is going to be a jazz song. I just write, and whatever comes out is, is what, what, you know, what it is. And, um, and they all have their own little paths, my songs, and they all kind of go to, to different places. And there is a really gypsy track on the album, there is a, a folky track, and then there's, a, you know, the jazzy side to it as well. So it's kind of a bit of everything, but but at the same time, I, I really feel that that's kind of the arrangement, whereas the actual songs themselves are just songs, you know. Um, and the arrangements have come from the inspirations more than the... Uh, than, I don't know, I mean, the lyrics have been inspired by my life, but the actual melodies, they just come from somewhere else. I don't know where, to be honest, and they just kind of come to me and then, and then they're out there. But, but when it comes to actually putting them to the band, this is when we can really draw from inspirations and go, oh, the big jazz bands of the 30s were, you know, were so great and the way that they all played, a, had a big brass section and things like that really kind of helped me um, arrange for a band and uh, with my guitarist Stephen as well, we, we did it together. 
Um, but I don't feel like it's better. Um, I just think it's different and it's new and it's kind of um, there's something something else about it that, that people can't put their finger on it, which I kind of like. <laughs> Her songs somehow seem to contain a clash of emotions, especially when it comes to music versus lyrics. Here's Gabby's explanation for that. Well, yeah, I mean, it's quite funny because um, because people are kind of dissecting my new songs, they're going, well, the lyrics are quite dark. And I'm like, if you listen to my first album, you'll hear that all of the lyrics are pretty dark. But even in the happiest songs, they're still quite quite kind of, um, I don't know, I, I, I have a real tongue-in-cheek sensibility with my music, I always like it to have a sense of humour and, um, and to be a bit silly and not to take myself too seriously, I think that's really important to me, so even if I want to sing about something that really upset me and is really, up, you know, really kind of depressing in a way, I don't want it to be put across in a way that's going to upset people, I prefer it to be in a way that's going to be like I can smile from that and also to have a bit of joy so we're on this together as a song about death but with the moment the trumpets come in it's suddenly like let's celebrate that you know because we're all in this together and um, so I like there to always be kind of two sides to the coin in every song I do really. If you've ever seen Gabby live you know how theatrical and flamboyant their shows are but being a musician first and foremost has she ever been afraid that style might ever take over substance? Yeah, I get afraid of that. I know that there's a lot of um, artists that are now suddenly just fashion icons and no one even listens to their music and I worry about that because I really am music first. I mean, for me, it's just having a dressing up box is really good fun and, and I'm really passionate about fashion but I'm really passionate about not taking that too seriously as well. I, I just want to, you know, make a visual experience for my audience so that they can say, I saw and heard and, you know, and just get a real a, a joy of the senses, of all of the senses. And that's what's really important to me, that it's not actually about what I wear. It's about just creating a really great show for everyone. And, and that's why, you know, I'm wearing really big dresses because it's so... Uh, I don't know, it's so, it stands out so much on that stage and we've got such a big band with eight people and so I've, I want to be seen. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's just also, I mean, I was really into musical theatre and then opera earlier on in my life and they would all get dressed up in beautiful clothes to do, to do their plays and I see music as kind of like a, an acting form in a way when you're on stage and so it would make sense, no sense for me to go in my, in my jeans and t-shirt and I, I kind of like the idea that that you can become a character in whatever dress you're wearing. Although I, one day I might, I might do a gig in my pyjamas because I quite like them as well. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I also choose things that I can play with as well. I like, I like dresses that I can dance with and that move with me. And um, you know, I, I was really inspired by seeing Bjork live two years ago because she did this song where she went like that, and then these huge white strings came from her sleeves, and it suddenly became a piece of art and a spectacle. And that that's kind of what I'm going for in a way. There's that that it's kind of I'm wearing art, and that's that's important to me. And still talking about perception, we asked Gabby about all the aspects involved in creating a public persona. I mean, that's really down to my team. I have an amazing team, and. Uh, and I, I did a speech the other day for Bright Young Brits, which is basically what it says on the tin. It's, it's, a, it's a new kind of scheme to, to bring um, the young British people to the forefront. And, uh, and the, the main thing I really want to talk about is how, at the beginning, I really thought I could do this by myself. And I was so stubborn about it. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to set my own record label up and I'm going to be my own manager, my own booking agent. And, you know, I used to book all my own gigs. And it got me to a certain place, but you get to somewhere where you're like, I've got to just concentrate on the music and let other people take over, because otherwise, what, what am I trying to do? I mean, you know, I'm being a bit stupid here, really. And, um, and I found just the most amazing team of people that all of them are ultra entrepreneurial. They're all so wonderful and uh, really independent, and, and they just do brilliant things for me. And so I'm, I'm really lucky with that. I'm, I'm very thankful, and they've had a lot to do with where I am right now. And, uh, and I wouldn't be there without them, so, so it's pretty, pretty cool to have a great team. No, it's, it's wonderful. And I, I just think collaboration is the key at the moment. I think working with other people that have like-minded ideas and different kind of creativities and talents is so important, and I love doing that. And that's why I wear a lot of up-and-coming designers, because I love to promote their work. So this jacket is um, by Judith Clark 
who's a designer I met on Monday actually and she's lent me some pieces for tour and she's just so wonderful you know it's, it's just really great to have a chat with someone that's doing something like you in a completely different field and you're both feeling really good about what you're doing and and you want to work together and uh, and create beautiful things together I, I love all that Following the train of thought about collaboration, we asked her about her innovative way to establish a sponsorship with well-renowned brands and the benefits that come from it. We also got a bit curious about her own brand, Kepadashri. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Illamasca, um, I'm wearing their makeup at the moment. I I've, I've basically met with them last summer because um, when I came across their brand, I was like, this is me as a brand. I was like, their makeup is so, so me. and. Their whole ethics and everything that they do, and they're such wonderful people. I just was really excited by them, and uh, and I just basically cheekily said, "Can we like join forces and maybe you could sponsor me?" And you know, because because makeup is actually probably the most expensive thing I do. Because when it comes to, I've got an amazing hair and makeup girl, and when it comes to preparing a gig, like the biggest budget is always on hair and makeup, and I think the rest of my band are like, um, right. <laughs> And we want to get like beautiful big props and things and I started to realise that you know because we're such a small company because we're such a cottage industry we we do need help from other people that can maybe kind of lend us things or, or you know even gift us things and and Ellen Basco were just so understanding of that straight away they were like right you know let's help out and, uh, and they've really got behind us and we did a gig at their at their shop in Beak Street last year and they're just such wonderful people um, and then uh, Beyond Retro, there's a similar thing, the whole band wears their clothes and we absolutely love going there. Uh, there's quite a few designers I work with um, quite heavily as well, so there's Imbar Spectre, who all of my really big fluffy dresses that you'll see at my gigs, that's by Imbar Spectre. And then, I don't know if you can see, but there's a newspaper creation just here that I wore at the Barbican by Kuma Kotani, who's amazing as well, and she makes um, garments out of newspaper and, and recycled materials. And all of this kind of led me on to wanting to have um, at my, my gigs, like have more of a festival atmosphere and, and uh, kind of, you know, a bit of a shopping experience for people as well, because I love to shop and watch gigs, so why not put it together? Um, so I started a thing called Gabadashery, which is basically me curating um, accessories, jewellery, art, clothes that I really love. Um, made by some wonderful independent designers and it's all in one place called Gabadashery and we've got it um, online with Supermarket Sarah at the moment and also in Selfridges in the shop which is very exciting because we kind of introduced them together and then they went off and did something wonderful together which I love um, and yeah Gabadashery is really exciting for me and I can't wait to kind of bring it all around the world and to lots of other people because we've got some great stuff in there and everything that we have is something that I would wear, hang on my wall, and buy, basically. You think it might be over, but nothing is cold and heartless or simple or plain when it comes to Gabby Young. In fact, not only we got her to dedicate a song to us, we also got a story about those who came before us. It's obviously about fans, songs requests, and inspirational human beings. When I was in San Francisco, I was uh, written an email before um, by a mother of a fan of mine saying my son is a really big fan and he's, he's in hospital at the moment because he had a huge accident and would you come and play a surprise gig to him and uh, it was just such an amazing thing to do so we went to this hospital and went to play for him and, and I was saying on the way there that as long as he doesn't ask for me to play Too Young to Die because that would just make me cry and really kind of get very depressing and upsetting because it was about me and cancer that was what the song was about and, uh, and I got there and he was like there's only one thing I want you to play, and that's too young to die. Oh, no. Oh, no. But I couldn't say no to him, like, coming all the way to San Francisco so you to did? sing for him. So I did it. But I changed the words so that it was a little less depressing, because otherwise I would have just, you know, been in floods of tears, and that wouldn't have been very professional. So, uh, so yeah, so I changed the words slightly, and I was, like, just going... <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, it was, it was very emotional, actually. It was an amazing moment. And he's out of hospital now, and... All well and good. So. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. It was really special meeting him. He's a very inspirational person. So, as we we'll show you gathered by now, this one with Gabby was a very special thing. Not only she opened the door to her house for us, she's also opened the door to her heart. And as a consequence, we were reduced to tears, literally. So, as you've enjoyed this one, stay tuned to GMT Gaps for so many more sessions. And until then, 
Bye.